Graham and Major General uh, Rego have introduced some very interesting topics this morning. I hope you've found it as interesting as I have. Um, Major General Rego talked about explosive growth. Um, personally, I believe that uh, the future, you know, one of the key uh, issues for the future is what I call in layman's terms a, uh, a new global space traffic management solution. I think that is one of our challenges critical to protecting um, the UK's civil uh, and defence interests in space. And I believe personally that the UK has a world leading role to play in that because of some of our unique uh, strengths, capabilities, skills and relationships. But um, you're not really here to hear what I think. Um, I have the very great honor of introducing uh, General Sir Gordon Messenger to give us um, the UK defense perspective on the topics. Uh, Sir Gordon and I have a few things in common that he's probably unaware of. We both spent some time in Izmir, Turkey in years oh, wow. past. Uh, we both have three children. Um, <laughs> but I could never hope to achieve half as much in my career uh, as uh, he his, he, he has to date. Um, you'll all be aware of his critical contributions uh, to the UK's security interests, which give him unparalleled operational and strategic insight, uh, which we're very grateful he's come to share with us today. Um, very keen to hear his thoughts on the strategic challenges and opportunities facing the UK in space today. I'm sure you all are as well. Thank Sir you Gordon. very much uh, indeed. Um, what Catherine neglected to mention is, of course, I'm a Royal Marine and therefore uh, not very clever. Um, so uh, keep those uh, expectations uh, down. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real uh, pleasure to be here. It's actually a real pleasure to see um, standing room only because it's an indication of the enormous uh, interest in, in, in this subject. Um, I, I'm really grateful for the international uh, participation here and I'm hugely grateful for the for the commercial uh, participation uh, in this. Um, I'm not an expert. Uh, I recognize that I'm a generalist in, a, in an ocean of expertise, but I do know that uh, this is a small but vital community. Um, people who recognize uh, the importance of, of space, uh, recognizing uh, the uh, essential nature of hitching our nation and our military onto a wagon that is uh, heading at pace uh, in a uh, in a particular uh, direction and it's not something that any of us uh, are going to do uh, a a alone uh, so as i say i'm 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 relatively uh, new um, to uh, uh, immersing myself in in this business i'm delighted to to note the presence of nick ailing in the front row uh, for uh, the, the the lifeline uh, when we come to uh, to questions uh, but believe me uh, i and um, uh, the senior leadership uh, in the ministry of defense absolutely recognize uh, the importance of, of of this i hope to demonstrate uh, in the next 20 minutes or so uh, how uh, we are, uh, are taking that forward um uh, the first uh, and, and i think the most important uh, central message therefore is that we are uh, taking space seriously but that we need uh, your help and we really do uh, need to move on from uh, the caricature of the uk service uh, individual saying why do i need space uh, as long as i've got my gps and my communications uh, something that was and and to a degree still is a prevalent view um, around the defense community what what i won't do because as i uh, uh, there'll be other speakers um, uh, here to cover this in more detail is, is labor the point about why uh, space matters but from a, a military and, and of course it, it supports uh, our everyday life in obvious ways and less obvious ways but there are many uh, specific military uh, uh, utilizations the first of course uh, is its essential role in providing position navigation and uh, timing uh, derived from the global navigation uh, satellite uh, systems and without which uh, frankly we wouldn't be able to do our business uh, in the way that we do uh, and the uh, our ability to uh, operate uh, with confidence with precision weaponry uh, in places that require precision, um, such as Mosul and Raqqa, ongoing now, utterly dependent on the support of that uh, that system. 
Uh, of course, we require it for satellite uh, communications. That's not just uh, voice and data, but you'll be aware that our UAVs um, are, are uh, controlled uh, through uh, space uh, capability. And we are increasingly uh, reliant on space for our intelligence, surveillance uh, and uh, reconnaissance. And this is an area where we're seeing uh, space uh, stretch boundaries that uh, previously we have uh, relied upon uh, air breathing assets. And one of uh, the challenges that uh, that I and others in the audience have as part of the Requirements Oversight Committee, which is the, the committee that scrutinises future requirements to ensure that we're investing in the right sorts of capabilities and technologies in the future, is the extent to which we can take a punt on uh, space being able to deliver uh, those capabilities that um, that currently are delivered by air breathing assets, or whether we're in the business of of, of, of continuing to update uh, the types of capabilities that we have at the moment, that is a, a constant tension, and many of in, in you in the room uh, will recognise it. And of course, there are the less obvious but nonetheless vital uh, uh, areas of support, such as asset tracking uh, and uh, logistics. So the importance is recognised, um, but what we have to do is to be prepared as a military community, as part of the broader community, for what we know is exponential change uh, that is already underway and gathering pace. We know that launch uh, capability is becoming more accessible. We know that more nations are becoming spacefaring and not all of those nations share our view of the rules-based international system or indeed our values. We know that the commercial sector is developing at pace and uh, overlapping with what have previously been government and military uh, capabilities. Uh, and we know that space technology is becoming ever more sophisticated and what one can achieve in space uh, and from space uh, is uh, developing and in the hands of more and more uh, actors. That presents uh, both threats and opportunities, and I'll come to that in a second, but I did want to touch on um, our uh, emphasis on mainstreaming uh, space in our doctrinal and our conceptual and our operational uh, thinking. For those of you who had the enormous uh, pleasure of being at my talk at DSCI on uh, Monday, uh, probably just you actually, I'm just bigging myself up there, um, uh, I held up this, um, the Future Force uh, concept, which is a very recently uh, published piece of work by our Doctrine uh, Centre. Uh, and it's there to essentially lay out the conceptual backdrop to how we see uh, defence operating and military operations uh, into the future. And, of course, uh, um, it has widened uh, the number of traditional domains uh, through which we look at future operations, away from the, the traditional maritime, air and land domain, and we have included two uh, further domains, firstly, uh, cyber, uh, and secondly, space. So those two become arenas, if you like, where we recognise that military operations uh, will need to take account, will need to protect, uh, will need to dominate uh, as appropriate, uh, and need to be factored into all our future thinking. And we think that this will uh, raise uh, awareness amongst uh, uh, operational uh, commanders and the broader community. And, and, and we divide um, our approach into, uh, and you, you'll know these uh, terms, uh, uh, space situational awareness, SSA, space support to operations, which are many of the sort of PNT things I talked about, space service support, which is um, uh, the, the, the business of operating in space, and space control, uh, which is about preserving uh, our uh, freedom of action uh, in, in space. 
The second uh, area of, uh, of, of mainstreaming, uh, if you like, and I don't have anything to hold up at this point, but I just wanted to raise the awareness of a core narrative that is developing in the ongoing uh, security and capability review, which is that of modern deterrence. Uh, and one of the things we're taking seriously in the building is uh, defence's contribution to modern deterrence, because obviously uh, deterrence uh, has many, many uh, levers and organs uh, way beyond uh, simply uh, the military. This uh, 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 retains um, existing uh, traditional uh, deterrence theory, but places it into a modern context. Uh, a modern context. It talks about the multifaceted nature uh, of deterrence beyond simply the deterrent. Um, uh, you know, the 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 the, the, the big submarine um, uh, delivering an all or nothing uh, option. It talks about agile and graduated uh, options, uh, so that this isn't, as I say, um, uh, something that is all or nothing. One can tailor the effect. Uh, that one wants. It absolutely utilises modern technologies such as cyber. It will uh, rely to a greater or lesser extent clearly on effects both in and from uh, space as a hugely uh, important uh, component of it. And it has to embrace uh, emerging, new and emerging technologies. And we need to recognise that those are technologies that are moving at pace and we need to apply them in a deterrent context because after all that's what we're here uh, that's what we're here to do space matters in that in 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 that in that regard so if we talk about uh, threats uh, and uh, opportunities again um, uh, uh, recognizing the expertise of the audience I'll, I'll skip over the threats but clearly there are developing counter space uh, capabilities uh, being developed by certain nations, many of whom do not uh, share our view of the world, uh, and that we know can uh, destroy, disrupt, and degrade our ability to operate uh, in space. There are cyber and electromagnetic threats out there that can uh, deny us uh, freedom of uh, action uh, in space, and could threaten the entirety of the enterprise, the network that feeds from and depends uh, upon uh, space. There is the potential for the corruption of data and information that we have come to rely upon, uh, but that we may no longer be able to trust if certain actors have the ability to disrupt and degrade uh, that information. I go back to my point on our reliance of space for certain uh, aspects uh, of our business. The, 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 the widely uh, available and very credible uh, uh, explosion in commercial uh, product that comes um, uh, does uh, uh, provide uh, opportunities for uh, potential adversaries and absolutely narrows the uh, advantage that governments and militaries have traditionally held uh, in this space. And of course, there are natural hazards. Space weather, which is an area I'm told uh, needs further study and we don't yet uh, fully understand. Uh, debris, uh, uh, I'm told 20,000 objects in space, of which only 1,500 are active uh, satellites. We play um, a strong role in that the situation and awareness that makes that environment uh, as safe as it can be. And of course, the proliferation of satellites, particularly if we're getting into um, uh, networks, uh, um, uh, is going to complicate uh, what I call battle space management, but you'll call quite rightly something else. Um, so what? Well, resilience starts uh, to really matter. Uh, in that space. And one of the things that we have absolutely woken up to is that resilience uh, in our capabilities and resilience in our networks and resilience in our systems are not an afterthought. They need to be resourced and invested in at the outset. They may even require trade-offs from some of the sort of bells and whistles capabilities that we would like in order to assure as much resilience as we can. That means 
um, adopting both defensive and security measures to assure, ensure that some of those uh, threats that we face uh, are mitigated. Um, it means potentially building redundancy uh, into our systems so that we can absorb uh, shocks. Uh, it means avoiding total dependency on some of those capabilities and effects that we um, are, are used to getting from space. So we're investing a lot of S&T into alternative ways of doing PNT, for example. And it means uh, working on attribution uh, to uh, avoid this spectre of deniable activity in space that if it proliferates uh, could be a, a, an enormous uh, challenge to us. So resilience matters across the board, but boy, does it matter uh, in the space uh, environment. We also need to uh, encourage, uh, as, as best as we are able, responsible behaviour uh, in space. Uh, and I'm aware of the, uh, the desire, the, the, the uh, search, uh, the uh, intent uh, for uh, international uh, protocols in this area, uh, but I'm also aware that the sort of high watermark of something like UNCLOS is going to be very, very difficult to, uh, uh, to attain. My, um, my 23-year-old lad is, uh, is staying with me at the moment in London, and uh, he, um, he came in last night and said, what are you doing? I said, oh, I've got a space, a space speech to do tomorrow. Anyway, so about 10 minutes later, he, he, he dropped in a bit of, you know, scrawled writing uh, and said, this might come in handy. He said, common heritage of mankind. I said, bloody hell, mate. Um, he said, it's a principle of international law which holds that defined territorial areas and elements of humanity's common heritage, cultural and natural, natural should be held in trust for future generations and be protected from exploitation by individual nation states or corporations. And that was first mentioned in the uh, protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict, but has uh, migrated into uh, conventions uh, involved in space. Um, I, 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 I share that with you, uh, not that it would be uh, news to you, but just to just to highlight the, the level of sophistication of intelligence of the messenger family uh, <laughs> uh, of, of, an, of an evening. Um, let's, let's turn to, um, to, to op opportunities then, of which uh, there are many, and the, uh, I hope um, are the motivation for many of you being here. Nationally, uh, and you heard from Graham earlier, I understand, we are increasingly uh, well uh, placed. Um, we have a heritage and a history uh, in this uh, business that dates back uh, decades. We have a culture of uh, innovation and innovative uh, thinking uh, that we should not underplay uh, as a, uh, a national asset. And we have a small uh, but exceptional uh, space uh, community, many of whom I know are in this room. We also nationally, and again, I'm, I, I'm sure you have heard this already, uh, not lacking uh, in ambition. Uh, we, we all have heard of the, the, the launch uh, capability ambition. Uh, that you'll have heard of our desire to be world leading uh, in this area. And uh, you'll be aware of the uh, impressive uh, levels of growth uh, in the space sector uh, in this country. Uh, but you'll also be aware of uh, successes in other uh, nations, of uh, developments in other nations that do run the risk of outstripping us. So that while we should, uh, I think, quietly congratulate ourselves on a, uh, a, 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 a where we find ourselves, we cannot uh, be complacent and need to uh, steel ourselves and prepare ourselves as a, as a nation uh, for the pace of change and the depth of competition uh, that we will uh, be facing. From an MOD perspective, uh, frankly, uh, uh, the emphasis is on mainstreaming uh, and uh, investing. Um, and I think those two things are the words that I would uh, use to summarize our, our approach. 
Um, in terms of investing, uh, you'll be aware uh, from the SDSR uh, in 2015 that we are procuring a ballistic missile uh, defense radar, which clearly has uh, strong uh, SSA uh, potential. Uh, we are uh, enhancing the UK Space Operations Centre uh, in High Wycombe, uh, which will make it a far more uh, capable asset, both from an infrastructure and um, a networking perspective, but also from an international uh, collaboration uh, and, um, and um, the, um, the multi uh, national connectivity uh, that we're seeing into that place will uh, expand uh, considerably. Uh, we've recently uh, announced the first part of the Skynet uh, 6 uh, program, and we have, uh, as you know, a future beyond line of sight uh, program uh, that will uh, deliver the future uh, network um, uh, and that is has got good profile uh, in, uh, in 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 the building uh, and um, is seen as a really important uh, program for the future. And uh, lastly, we're 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 doing work to understand the benefits uh, of a uh, sovereign uh, ISR uh, program, um, uh, and uh, that is work that is underway based on um, a recent. Uh, uh, procurement uh, that we have made. Um, we're also um, looking to structure and formalize our approach uh, to space and, and Nick's team are uh, investing uh, uh, and Ben at the back and I saw, uh, investing a, a lot of uh, effort in, in trying to uh, frame uh, the MOD's uh, approach uh, to space to clarify how we will develop, operate, exploit and protect in space, how we will work with international partners and across government. It has three uh, principal uh, objectives. Firstly, to optimize space support to the front line. Secondly, to enhance space resilience and operational effectiveness. And thirdly, to complement and support wider government uh, activity. Uh, the key elements within it, uh, the first, uh, and uh, I'm on record on Monday as saying I, I still think this is uh, the biggest challenge to uh, defence as a whole, not just space, is growing the right people and skills to be able to exploit the exponential pace of progress uh, in this uh, sector. We need to recognise that there is national skills shortage, not just in space expertise, but in a number of other areas where I am very watchful that people will become our, um, our, our, our key uh, vulnerability. And so, A, we have to take it seriously, but B, we have to try and be less competitive uh, as a nation and recognise that we have a national asset, which is skills, uh, and that cannot be focused in the government or the private sector or the, or, the, or the public sector. There needs to be a more collaborative approach for the benefit of all. Uh, and more flexible uh, engagement and use of the skills that we have uh, is a real theme. And we're, we're doing it in the nuclear world, we're doing it in the engineering world, we're doing it in the IT world. We need to uh, expand that into, into, the, the space, uh, into the space world. I think that uh, we also need to recognize that this is a global market um, and that um, uh, skills um, can uh, be fluid across international boundaries. That's why national ambition matters. If, these, if, if our people are, um, that we want to retain can see a trajectory, can see a pathway, can see an ambition that is being uh, invested in governmentally and departmentally, uh, then of course they're more likely to stay than to go. Uh, the second theme um, is to promote uh, uh, cross-government collaboration. Uh, I think that that is uh, healthy, uh, but can uh, never uh, be uh, overplayed. Uh, uh, and I commend uh, Rusi um, for uh, calling uh, this conference, because I think the gathering of, of, of the clan, if you like, uh, is, really, uh, is really important in that regard. We're trying to broaden and deepen multinational uh, cooperation. Um, it's already strong with key partners. Uh, we have over 50 years of cooperation 
uh, with the US. Uh, I'm told that uh, uh, RAF Filingdale's first became a UK-US venture in 1963. Uh, that is a strong uh, and enduring partnership uh, by any measure. And you'll be aware also of the Combined Space Operations uh, Initiative, which uh, is a Five Eyes uh, collaboration uh, with our uh, operations uh, centre as a key uh, role, on it, role in it. Uh, and there is talk in the community of potentially uh, expanding that to other nations. And then the final strand is to drive innovation and to exploit uh, technology. And I hope that you're aware of the MOD's uh, innovation uh, strategy with associated uh, funding. Uh, you, you may not be aware of the uh, many flowers that have bloomed uh, after that announcement, but not only have we enhanced uh, our structures and our capacity uh, inside a head office, but the Single Services and Joint Forces Command have taken it really uh, seriously, and there's some impressive uh, work being done in all single services. I I'll highlight it for space. Uh, I will highlight the JFC's J-Hub uh, and the RAF's Rapid Capability Office as two examples of where um, we're trying to drive uh, uh, forward uh, innovation. So that's... Um, uh, all I was going to say. Um, in conclusion, uh, I hope uh, I have laid out that we uh, in the Ministry of Defence take this seriously and increasingly so. Uh, I hope uh, uh, um, you share my view uh, that we have come a long way, uh, but that we cannot be complacent and that there is much to do and faster. Uh, and I, 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 I close with how I started, which is that collaboration both with international partners, with government colleagues, and with the private sector has to be the way uh, forward if we are to maximize this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you.